people that want to saw, 60% of which are under 25 years old, have lived in relative peace and democracy for the last 20 years, excelling in sports, school, education, robotics, music, and culture, thriving again. And all of that was seemingly instantaneously erased one year ago today when the Taliban took Kabul. That was Azita Ghanizada, star of The Kite Runner on Broadway, speaking last month during her curtain call on the one-year anniversary of the fall of Kabul. Since the Taliban seized power, Afghans have faced mass starvation and a crippled economy, and girls beyond the sixth grade have been barred from schools. It's an international crisis that hits closer to home for Ghanizada. Born in Kabul, her family fled the country during the Soviet invasion of 1979. They came to the U.S. as political asylum seekers, where they worked to bring the rest of their immediate family out of a horrific war zone. Now, Ghanizada stars on Broadway in the stage adaptation of Afghan-American novelist Khalid Husseini's classic book, The Kite Runner. The play tells the story of an unlikely friendship between a wealthy boy and the son of his father's servant during the fall of Afghanistan's monarchy through the Soviet invasion and the rise of the Taliban. Azida Ghanizada joins me now. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Let me just start by asking you about the play. How big of a deal was it when The Kite Runner was adapted from book to movie, but now movie to play? You know, I have to be very honest, having the book adapted to a play and coming to Broadway is next level. We've had stories about Afghanistan in film and television, mainly geopolitically narrated stories, military focused. And to have a, a book that seemingly feels like poetry come to life on stage on Broadway, the pinnacle of what theater is here in New York City at this time, when artists are being stripped of their voices in Afghanistan was just... Uh, it was an, a dream I never thought I would see. That's awesome. And let's just talk about you. You came to the U.S. as an asylum seeker during the Soviet invasion. What has this past year been like for you, watching the Taliban regain control of Afghanistan, effectively wipe out some of the progress that was made in recent years, especially on girls' education? It's unbelievably uh, annihilating to your soul. I don't know how to put in words what it has done, not just to the 60% of under 25 population in Afghanistan, the young girls that are sending DMs to myself and Afghan American diaspora organizations and whatnot, begging them for help, telling us their only crime is that they were born a girl. They don't understand why they have to hide now. Um, rallying around Afghan organizers that are creating underground schools for girls, living through this again, a second time and having these uh, barbarians come back into power, illegally seizing Kabul and breaking whatever fake promises they stated they would, they would live out by allowing girls to participate, women to participate fully in society, to have all of that happen again, has been, um, it's been a call to action. Uh, it's been a call to arms for so much of the community. Um, and it's been hard, you know, you just, you don't think you're gonna have to go through this experience multiple times in one life. And unfortunately it's happened again. It has happened again. And we've had another refugee crisis. Thousands of Afghans are still stuck in the Middle East waiting to come to the US. Uh, in your opinion, what more could the US be doing to help these refugees? Well, there's a lot, you know, Mehdi, that we can be doing. First of all, I think recently it was just kind of um, uh, made some some news headlines, um, at least amongst people that are paying attention to what's going on in Afghanistan, that, that the United States collected $20 million in humanitarian parole application fees and have only approved 123 of those uh, applications out, out of 66,000. Now, Ukrainian refugees don't have a fee to pay. So Afghans are paying $20 million. And we have to remember also that these are uh, American allies. The majority of them put their lives on the line to assist the U.S. occupation of Afghanistan for the last 20 years, and their paperwork to get into the United States has been held up. I remember a year ago having these conversations with various senators and Congress people about waiving the humanitarian parole fee, and everybody saying that was the priority for them, and clearly now we're seeing $20 million later, that didn't happen. There's also an Afghan-American adjustment.
Investment Act that's going on in Congress right now. It's a bipartisan bill where Afghans, you know, the United States, I think we've got about 76,000 Afghan refugees that came here uh, a year ago that have now made America their home, large in part to their neighbors, the, the communities within the United States that have stood up and reached out and helped um, welcome all of these refugees into their communities. Um, their status is temporary. We have to figure out a way to yeah. provide them with permanent status. And that's something that we have to push Congress to do. You know, these are the things that we witnessed happened a year ago, all of us. It's not the war yeah. when, when we escaped. We didn't see what happened then. And this time we saw people clinging to the side of airplanes. We saw people throwing their babies over yes. barbed wire cages and losing them because they needed to get away from what is happening now, which is the Taliban's occupation of Afghanistan. And so there is so much more that they could be doing. I'm glad you mentioned the discrepancy with Ukraine. That has been pretty glaring and depressing uh, to see. Last year, uh, I had the author of The Kite Runner, Khalid Husseini himself, on this show. And I asked him, how do we think and talk about Afghanistan going forward? Have a listen to what he said. For a lot of people, Afghanistan is synonymous with conflict, with war and persecution and displacement. But the fact is, it's a beautiful country filled with beautiful people who have poetry in their soul, who are humble, who are hospitable, and who are kind. They don't deserve the 40 years of violence and persecution and cruelties that they've endured. And now is not the time to turn our back to Afghanistan and its beautiful people. So let me ask you the same question. How do you think we should talk about Afghanistan, think about Afghanistan going forward? You know, I, I love what Khaled had to say. And I think what's so beautiful about this play is that it really introduces people to so much of the poetry that is Afghanistan, the music, the, the dance, the weddings, the cultural traditions, the humanity, the loyalty, all of those things come to life in this story. And the arts is a big part of connecting people to our story in that space. Yeah, it's been 40 years of war games that the Afghan people have never wanted. I, I mean, I'm lucky that I was one of the few that got to come out and start life over here again. And the people of Afghanistan have endured so much. And we saw through 20 years of democracy, you know, the, the girls in robotics and the cricket team excelling and going back to the Olympics, having surfers and, and mountaineers and photography and all those things. You know, we really have to think about Afghanistan as as exactly what Khalid said, which is a beautiful land of people that have endured so much pain. And what we need to do is remember that there's so much humanity and people behind all those war stories. And I think that diplomatically, we cannot turn our backs, especially on the girls and the young boys who are now being put through madrasas and all of those other kinds of schools. We have to keep fighting diplomatically to ensure that the people that are occupying Afghanistan now don't erase women from society again, because that just can't happen. So we yes. can't turn our backs and we have to remember, again, you know, going off of what Khalid said, the beauty and the poetry of the people of Afghanistan, sustaining their culture and yes. uh, our music.